Bobby wrote it. <laughs> so that was great, Bobby. I love that word. I always love to sing the word. It's just so good. It, it uh, teaches you, reminds you, helps you, you know, to remember it. God is good, isn't he? I got a word for you tonight. A word that the Lord laid on my heart yesterday. And I was, I have read this scripture over and over and over many times in my life. And it was the scripture that the Lord gave me when he called me to preach. But I never looked at it the way that I looked at it the past couple of days. So I'm going to give it to you the way the Lord gave it to me. You might want to have pencil and paper because there's some scriptures in here and there's a few things that you might just want to write down. You know, I, I never know when I always make sure that I have my pencil in hand when there's a preacher up because sometimes they can say some things. Brother Rick, I wrote down some things you said and I'm going to use them. I hope it's okay with you. I'm going to use them one day because that's just the way it is. You know, God just gives these things out and, and you, 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 can, you can grab them. You can hold on to them and you can take them out and you can use them too for the glory of God, of course. But it's blessings for everyone. Blessings for everyone. And first we're going to go to Luke 4. And I'm going to read 16 and 17. And then I'm going to finish it up in Isaiah 61. So if you want to turn with me to both of those scriptures. Let me get mine down here because I like to to run off my copies. Like I said, y'all, it's easier for me because I'm getting old. <clears throat> Luke 4, 16 and 17 says, When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath, and he stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll, and he found the place where this is written. Now I'm going to go to Isaiah 61 and start at the first verse. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the son of aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be called, be named, the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentile, and in their glory shall you boast yourself. Let's pray. Father, I just come before you tonight, and I just want to thank you for your word, Lord, your word that's going to go forth, Father. Yes. I pray, God, that you would use it as, as nutrients to us, God, so that the spirit man will grow inside of us, Lord. Sort of like vitamins, God, that you just give us, Lord. Each of these words, just let it be a vitamin in us, God, so that our spirit man will grow, Father, and grow and grow more and more for you, for your glory, for your honor, Lord. Help us to, to glean out of this word tonight what you want for each and every person, God. And we'll give you the glory and the honor and the praise. For it's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Beauty for ashes. Happiness for sadness. Freedom to the prisoners. The ones that are bound. Favor from God. 
new beginnings and a new name. I found those things and you could go on and on and on. You could list all kind of things out of there if you look really close. But in Luke 4, the audience that Jesus was speaking to that, uh, in that time, they thought that he was talking about Israel and that Israel was going to get the goods and that the enemy, their enemy, was going to get all the bad. Everything that the Lord said in here, they thought that he was going to destroy their enemies. Yes, that they were going to get their just rewards. But what Jesus said, and as I began to look at the scripture, read the scripture over and over and over and over, he said, all these blessings, all these things that I'm telling you, this, this beauty for ashes, the joy of, 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 of the anointing coming upon you, all of that is for everybody. Yes. It's not just for the, Israel, uh, the people of Israel, it's also for the Gentiles. Yeah. It's for everybody. That's what he means. He said in Romans 22 and 17, he said, whosoever will. Is that not on the marquee out there or out on the, on the sign? I believe when I was yeah. writing that down, I thought it used to be. Yeah. I, I know that I've seen it out there, I thought. But I thought, you know, it's, it's whosoever will. Let them come. Yes. Let them come. You know, and, and those whosoever will, Brother Rick, sometimes you just don't know whether... They're the ones that you want or not, but God said, whosoever will. Right. Whosoever will. Yes. It doesn't matter what they are. You know, brother, we were talking about your food ministry a while ago and, and the ministry of different people that I've seen come in the Church of Atlanta. You know, the food ministry. Those people were given food. They, it, they were the whosoever will. They didn't look good. They didn't smell good. They didn't act good sometimes, but they're the whosoever will, Pastor. They're the whosoever will. Those kind walk in this church. They are the whosoever will, and we must receive whosoever will, right? Amen. 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 Right. We have to receive them because they belong to God just as well as we do. Yes. We're no different. There, there's no person, nobody out there any different than we are. They may have different circumstances, right. but they are no different. They are God's creation. God created them. Amen. The promise here is not only for God's chosen, but it's for the Gentiles. It's for the weak. It's for the afflicted. It's for the poor. It's for the, des the destitute, yes. for the blind, for the lame, for the prisoner. You name it. Beauty for ashes. It's for God, it's for anybody, anybody that whosoever will. The ashes and the dust represent man's origin. Yes. Genesis 2 and 7 tells us that the Lord formed man in the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life. So we're nothing but dirt with God's breath in us. That's what we are. That's what the Bible says. I'm just telling it like it is, Brother Rick. I'm just telling it like it is. It says that he formed us from the dust of the earth, breathed of the breath of life in us. Genesis 18 and 27 also tells us that Abraham said, What am I but dust and ashes? Now I'm going somewhere with this in many of In the Bible times, we read about ashes. We read that people sprinkled the ashes on themselves. They sat in sackcloth and ashes. Second, uh, second Samuel 13 and 17 or 19 tells us that Tamar put ashes on her head because she had been defiled by her brother. And so she put ashes on her head and when she went running in despair, see, it, it's a way that, that they used of mourning, yes. of grief, Right. Of, of sorrow, of sadness, of, yes. of all these things that would come upon them. They would use these ashes. Jeremiah 6 and, and 26 tells us that uh, wallow thyself in ashes. He was in bitter lamentations wow. over the uh, telling, he had to tell Jer uh, Jerusalem of their coming destruction, wow. of what was going to happen to them. Now, I know it's not, it's not the easiest thing for a preacher or a pastor or, or a lay person 
to tell somebody of some destruction that's going to come on them if they don't turn from their ways. But God puts that on us sometimes. And he has, to, has us to say, this is what's going to happen if you don't do this or that, whatever God's calling you to do. Ashes, a sign of mourning, a sign of grief, a sign of, of despair and, and sadness, mourning. But during, uh, I was reading uh, on the internet and I happened to hit a word about ashes or I was going down through there and it come up to this Indian man and it showed a picture of them covering themselves and it said that, they, that the ashes for them represents dead to self which it is to everybody, it should be, dead to self, dead to certain habits, you know, dead to uh, uh, certain, even the foods that they eat, they would give up the food, sort of like fasting to us, the food part. James 4 and 10 tells us that if we humble ourselves in the sight of God, that he'll lift us up. Yes. He's the one that does it. It's not us. We cannot lift ourselves up. He can shut the door on us. And he has done that many times in people's lives over the years. He's shut the door and he says, nope, nope, can't go through that one. I need you to humble yourself before the mighty yes. hand of God. That's what God wants. That's what he wants for us to humble ourselves. Humble, humility is a form of ashes. Yes. It's a form of it. Symbolically, we humble ourselves. We wallow in the ashes of humility. God said, that's what I need. That's what I want. I want you humbled before me, trusting in me, knowing that everything you do, everything that you say comes from me. Because, you know, this flesh right here, Pastor, yes. it can get in trouble. It can get in lots of trouble if I don't trust God, if I don't hold on to God. I was in a situation, uh, you know, and, and and you just have to you have to hold on to God. You have to say, Lord, I can't say anything. I can't do anything. I can't speak anything. I've just got to stand still. I've got to stand still. What's the Bible say? Stand still and see the salvation of God. Watch God work. Yes. In other words, just watch it work. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I just feel a calmness, Pastor. Yes. It's just like, it's like it just walked through the door, just, just a calmness coming in. I don't know what the Lord's doing, Brother Rick. I don't have a clue, but I know that when he walks through the door, yes. that, and when you sense his presence, that you know without a shadow of a doubt that something's happening. Something is happening. And God is the one that's working. God is the one that's making things change. God is the one that's, that's bringing the humility that he wants to see and he desires to see in our hearts. He's the one that's doing it, not us. Yes. We can't do anything within ourselves. We are but flesh. We are but flesh that gets in trouble when we open our mouth. God, help us. God help us yes. to do his will, to do his will. Symbolically, we humble ourselves, we wallow in the ashes of humility. And, and I said, when I was thinking about the ashes and I was thinking about the, the beauty for ashes, I, was, I said, Lord, what do you do with ashes? What is it that, that, just what is ashes? What are ashes? And immediately, I mean immediately behind that question, and the Lord's good because he always answers our questions. Yes. The Holy Spirit will come in and he'll give us answers if we ask for them. Yes. And immediately he says, it's the end of a fire. You can you can you can shout. It's all right. It's the end of the fire. The fire. The things that we've gone through. The way that that the enemy has brought things into our life that God turns around to make good. The fires that He throws on us and says, "All right, let's watch you burn. Let's see you burn." But see, God turns it around. And he says, he says, 
Because when you see the ashes, Martha, it's the end of the fire. It's the end of the fire. I don't know about you, but I'm glad sometimes to see the end of a fire. Because sometimes it can get really hot. Sometimes it can just be overwhelming. Sometimes the, the troubles and the trials and the tribulations that come against you are just so much. You just don't know whether you're going to make it through or not. But when you see the ashes. When God says the ashes are there, the ashes are there, he says it's the end of the fire. It's simple, but God's simple. If we listen to him, he's simple. He's really simple. I'm a simple-minded person, so he has to give it to me in a simple-minded way. I tell you, and I love the way that he does it. I love the way that he does it. But at the end of a person's life, you know, family, some, some family will, will bury ashes of the person. They'll place the ashes in an urn and they'll put them on a fireplace or, or they'll put them and hide them away in a closet or, or they'll even wear them in jewelry, wear the ashes in jewelry or they'll scatter, scatter them in various places of the world. But the Lord said, I take the ashes at the end of a fire and sometimes the Lord puts us through the fire. But I take that, he says, and I create it again. I said, you create it again? He said, yes, I take the ashes of your life, the things that have just tore you down, that has just ruined you. I take those ashes. I take the ashes that the enemy brings against you, the things that the enemy brings against you and tries to burn you up and cause you to, to, to just sit down and be done with it. Causes you to not want to live sometimes. He says, I take those ashes. Yeah, and he says, and I create something new. I create a new beginning in you, Martha. I create what I want you to be, what I want you to see. I give it to you. I put it in you. I cause beauty yes. for ashes. That's what I do. He says, if people give me their hearts, their whole hearts, I will take those ashes and I will cause something Great, something that they can't even imagine to come yes. forth, to spring forth. Beauty beyond measure, beauty beyond belief. The Lord's favor, and, and I know, I know without a doubt, the Lord's favor is in this house. Yes. I know it, I know it, I know it without a doubt that His favor is on you. He loves us. He knows that, that there are things that, that we cannot do within ourselves. But we know without a doubt, if we trust in him, he said, if you just give it all to me, give me the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. How many knows that word, that, that saying? The whole, just give me the whole kit and caboodle and I'll take care of it. I'll do it. I'll work it out. I'm the one that can do it. You know, Brother Rick, I'll be honest with you. For years and years and years, I tried to do it on my own. I tried to do everything. I tried to make everything perfect. I tried to make everything right. And I didn't have a lot of education. And when I get up here, I thank God I can't do this because I don't, I don't have the words. I don't have the, the education to speak to people. But he allowed me to see. Leave that. Leave it behind. Go away from it. Forget it. Like I said on Sunday, throw it in the let me throw it in the sea of forgetfulness. That's the only place God forgets something is he throws it in the sea of forgetfulness. Yeah. That's where he throws what he don't want to remember in the sea of forgetfulness. Amen. And he remembered, he, he, he gives me, not remember, he gives me that so that I would see that he has put it there, and I need to leave it alone. How many of us goes back to the sea of forgetfulness and digs out our sins and can't let go of them? I've done it many 
times, many times, many times, but the Lord says, I want to give you beauty for those ashes. I want to give you beauty for those things that, that's in your past, that's, that, that you do, that you think you have to do. I want to take care of them. I want to take a hold of them, and I want to, to work through you. Yes. I'm the one that wants to work through you. God, if I could just get it, if I could, if I could get it worded the way that I see it, you know, I'm just, I just don't have the words sometimes to give out what I want. But I know without a doubt that God can do it. Yes. I know that I can use His word. Yes. His word. His word is the one that that brings it forth. That that because Jeremiah 18 tells us that as the clay is in the potter's hand. So are we. So am I in his hand. He molds me. He makes me. He uses me. He molds you, makes you, and uses you in the way that he wants. But we have to be pliable. We have to be willing. We have to want him to do that. I looked up about the pottery, and I thought it was really strange. It said that it takes heat up to 2380 degrees and they start that fire but it takes two days to get to that 2380 degree then it takes five days for pottery inside the fire it's it more intense and more intense and more intense the fire gets hotter and the fire gets hotter and hotter and then, when they go to cool it down, when it's, when it's time to, to cool down, and the Lord's saying, okay, okay, devil, it's time for you to take your hands off of them. It's, it's my time now. The cooling down takes 10 days. Still takes 10 days. But we have to walk it out. We have to walk it out. We have to live in it. We have to work it. We have to believe it. God's word, we have to believe it. Right. Seemingly, you would think, I would think, that a 2380 degree oven or furnace would cause that clay to turn to dust. But no. When you go through the fire, you come out, and that pottery is shining, it's pretty, yes. gorgeous, beautiful. It's beautiful, y'all. Psalms 34 and 1 tells us, I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. At all yes. times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's been a hard lesson for, to learn. But I'm learning, Pastor, to speak the praises of God and not to worry about anything else. Not to think about anything else except just lifting up the name of Jesus and saying the name of Jesus and speaking his word and telling people about him. I was going to apologize for crying, but I can't, Pastor. I can't because that's what he's put in me and I tell him every time I come up here I say Lord they gotta be able to understand me or they're not gonna want me back you know they gotta be able to understand what I'm saying he says let me do it let me do it Martha let me do it Martha it's a hard lesson to learn pastor and I know, I know without a doubt that I'm not the only one that has a hard time turning everything over to the Lord. <laughs> We're all doing this. I know it's the truth. Yes. I'm just being honest with you. I'm being, I'm being plain, plain with you tonight. Isaiah 61, 7 through 10. I want to read that. I'm going to read it out of, it's called the easy reader version. <laughs> Lord, give me a, script, a, a Bible version that I can understand a little better, and I just thank him for it. You know, I used to be, and I don't say anything against anybody that just, that just reads the King James Version, 
that's fine. That's good. That's where I've been for years and years and years and years. I would not read anything else. I can't memorize anything else. Let me put it like that. I cannot memorize anything else. I have to memorize the scripture out of the King James Version for some reason. But I, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, i got to have it like a story. I need, to, I need the words every day. Today, I need a story. And so I found the easy reader. <laughs> I said, thank you, Lord, because he's the one that done it. But this, it says in the seventh verse of Isaiah 61, it says, In the past, other people shamed you and said bad things to you. You were shamed much more than other people. So in your land, you will, you will get two times. You will get two times more than other people. Y'all hold on to these promises now. God's given you something right here. He's going to give you two times more than what others get. He says you will get the joy that continues forever. Continuous joy. I'm telling you, when you live in continuous joy... I, I don't know how that is, but I know that I'm getting ready for it. I'm believing and I'm trusting God that that's going to happen. That's because I am the Lord and I love justice. I hate stealing and everything that is wrong. So I give the people what they deserve. I will make an agreement with my people forever. Their descendants will be known throughout the earth and everyone will know their children. Whoever sees them will know that the Lord has blessed them. Listen to that, y'all. To the ones that are praying for your children. Listen to that. He says, they will know, everyone will know their children. And whoever sees them will know that the Lord has blessed them. The Lord is blessing our children. The Lord makes me very happy. I'm completely happy with my God. And I like this part. He says, he dressed me in the clothes of salvation. And he put the victory coat on me. He put the victory coat on me. There's your song, Bobby. He put the victory coat on me. He put the victory coat on me. Because we got the victory through Jesus Christ. We have it. He says, I'm giving you the victory coat on Take it and put it on and wear it. Wear it. He says, I look like a man dressed with his, for his wedding, like a bride covered with jewels. The earth causes plants to grow and the, ground, and the garden makes the seeds planted there to rise up. In the same way, the Lord God will make goodness and praise grow throughout the nations. We have to praise the Lord. We just have to praise the Lord. It's time to rise up out of those ashes. It's time that we set aside all of the, all of the things that trouble us, that, that weigh us down, that hold us down, and say, Lord, it's all yours. I give it to you. I, I receive the will of God. I receive the work of God in me. That's what, that's what he wants us to do, is to receive his will in our lives. Amen. Yes. And to receive his work. Because we can work and work and work and not do us a bit of good, Pastor. But when we do it in the Lord's will, okay. when we do it for the Lord's will, works. Amen. It works. Yes. And just like we've all said many times, the Word works if you work the Word. The Word works. <laughs> but you got to work it. You have to work it. You know, the Bible can sit, and, and you've heard people say it many times, the Bible can sit on a coffee table and it can gather dust, not do a person a bit of good, Pastor. Not a bit of good. I'll be honest with you people. I'm going to tell you it like it is. I've done it. In years past, I just let mine sit on my shelf or on my nightstand. I'd get it when I was in trouble. 
Oh yeah, I'd get it when I was in trouble. I'd start looking. Where, where's it at? Where's it at? What? Where, where am I at? Where am I? I, I couldn't find anything. Why? Because I had not studied to show myself approved. Yes. A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now it's different. Let me go ahead and tell you, it's different when you can't remember. I'm not real good at remembering. I can go look it up. I'm not good at remembering. But God is working on that too. He's bringing things about. He's bringing the word about and he's, he's saying, okay, remember this. Do it this way. Do it this way. God's so good to us. He's so good to us because when we want, when we really want to live for him, when we really, really deep down have the great desire to work for him and to live for him, he just drops those little seeds into your, into your mind. And you say, oh, duh, Martha. <laughs> you know, that's what happens. That's what happens to me. Maybe, maybe you're different, but I don't think so. Because God has me in this place, and he has me giving this word for this time. Yes. And I trust him. I trust him. It might, be, it, it might not be the best, but I'm going to tell you, it's from God. So it is Amen. the best. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good to us. Double for your trouble, y'all. He's going to give you double for your trouble. And I'm expecting it, Pastor. I'm expecting great things. Absolutely. I'm expecting things to happen that we, we just sit back and say, wow, I cannot believe what God has done. I cannot believe it. And he done it so quick. Yes. He done it so quick. I feel that Amen. one, Pastor. I feel that one. Holy God. When I said he does it, he's going to do it so quick. He does a quick work. Does the Bible not say he does a quick work? Yes. I will do a quick work, he said. And he's going to bring it to pass quickly. It's going to happen. I'm in great expectation. I don't know about you. I want you to be with me. That's for sure. I want you to be with me in that great expectation because I know that in that, God is going to do it. He, he said today, when I, was, when I was praying, the Holy Spirit dropped in me. I felt it. I knew it without a doubt. And he said, I will. already done miracles. I've already began the work. I'm doing it. He said, oh, he said I'm doing miracles that you just cannot fathom. And it's happening right before your eyes.
and deny you said, I just want you to ask. I just want you to ask in faith, believing. In faith, believing. Thank Bobby, can you come to the piano? Thank you. Thank you. Lord, thorn man, he thorn man from the dust of the earth. And if he formed us from the dust of the earth, I know that he can fix us. I know that he can fix us. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. This is not just for preachers. It's not just for ministers. It's just not for the priests of the house. This is for everybody. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent us to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prisons to them that are bound. The sovereign God, the sovereign God has sent us to comfort those that are brokenhearted. The sovereign God has sent us to proclaim to the captives, you can be released. You can be set free. But it's your choice. It's your choice tonight. It says the prisoners will be freed. He gives joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. He appoints those that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The heaviness that can be upon us so sometimes so heavy that we can't even hold.
Thank you, Sister Martin. Thank you for being passionate for God. You are in the pulpit tonight. And each time that you're in the pulpit, because number one, you have a calling on your life. You're passionate for God. Amen. And Martha, thirdly, just as important, I know the, I know the life that you live. I learned a long time ago, and I'm going to preach over this message tonight. I learned a long time ago that no matter how much degrees you have or education, it does not matter your vocabulary, the eloquence of your speech, or how much theological training that you have. You cannot feed people with words until you first touch them with your spirit. Because the Bible says to know no man, no person after the flesh, would to know the minister of the spirit first. Spirit first. The rest falls into place. God uses each of us in our personality. He uses us who we are as a person. He uses us in our own unique way. And uh, sometimes we don't need to forget that tears are a language that God does understand. Now, tears uh, or styles of preaching or any of those things does not move God. Faith moves God. If I say amen, faith moves God. But tears are a language that He understands. Amen. And, and we first meet people Spirit. We touch them with our spirit. And uh, I don't put much stock in how educated you are, how much great vocabulary you have. You've got a blind spirit. Amen. I appreciate your spirit. Well, I've got no word about the vocabulary. You hang around me long enough in the road. Amen. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us through your word. Amen. Speak to us through your word. God is a good God. BJ, I feel led to ask you to come and pray. I've been addiction. Would you do that, son? Come on and dismiss us in prayer. And uh, not dismiss us in prayer. Dismiss us in prayer. Pray our benediction. And uh, I know as you shared in my office, God has a calling on your life. How many of y'all appreciate BJ? God. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, Terry, you're, you're the mom, so I'm going to count on you to remind me Sunday to, to do this again Sunday when we have more people. We, have a, we had a beautiful congregation Sunday. You know, God has a plan, puts things together in his timing. Again, they that wait on the Lord, that doesn't mean sit in the corner moment and a few words and twiddling your fingers. Uh, it means to wait on the Lord. But I want to do it again tonight because I just found out about it late, late yesterday evening. Congratulations to Mr. Caleb for getting accepted at the University of Georgia. Did you unfriend me on Facebook or something? I don't know, but I have posted something on your Facebook, but uh, I'll send you a friend request. Lift your hand up and say, God's got plans for my life. Come on, lift your hand all over this building. Say, God's got plans for my life. And I'm not going to be a triangle and a round peg. I'm going to be what God's called me to be. What you can't be except what God's called you to be. Don't try to be nothing else but what God calls you to be. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. You might just be known as a weeping preacher. Whatever God calls you abide 